Hello, Biology 230. This is Dr. Chastity Bradford at Tuskegee University, and I am continuing to be your tour guide as we continue to tour the cell throughout Chapter 6. And this is Concept 6.3, Chapter 6.3. This concept addresses the following. It addresses the fact that the eukaryotic cell's genetic instructions are housed in the nucleus and carried out by the ribosomes. Now the nucleus, as we all know, contains most of the DNA in a eukaryotic cell. And ribosomes use the information from the DNA to make proteins. What do we know about the nucleus? It is the information central. It contains most of the cell's genes. It has a nuclear envelope that encloses it, separating it from the cytoplasm. In the nucleus, there's DNA and there are proteins, and they form genetic material called chromatin. Now, you may not have heard of chromatin, but I'm sure you heard of chromosomes. But chromosomes are just what is formed when the chromatin condenses. And also, there's a nucleolus, and it's located within the nucleus, and it is at this location that ribosomal RNA is made. This is where the ribosomal subunits are formed. And if you recall, the ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis. So this is a visual pictorial diagram this is the nuclear envelope separating the cytoplasm, which would be outside this nucleus, from the nucleus. There's a nucleolus, and is here where the DNA is located that controls the synthesis of the ribosomes. And there's also chromatin, and you recall the chromatin is just that condensed DNA and protein that eventually becomes the discrete chromosomes that we all know and love. And of course, there are nuclear pores depicted here. So they're pores. So if you see these pores, what, what should you start thinking about? Structure, function, structure, function. If there are pores here, then that must mean that these pores are, re are there to regulate movement. They regulate movement of material in and out of the nucleus. Okay? So this nucleus will, is structured in a way that will allow it to protect the DNA. It has this double membrane. Inside of the nucleus is a nucleolus for ribosomal RNA synthesis. Okay. So this is the nucleolus again, and this is a pictorial diagram of the ribosomal subunits so that are made by, um, synthesized in the nucleolus. They are made of a large ribosomal subunit, and you also have a small ribosomal subunit. Made here in the nucleolus. Now, how does the rest of the cell get access to the nuclear chromosomal information? So if the information is in the nucleus, how does the rest of the cell gain access to this information? Could it be that these pores are important for regulating the movement of material in and out of the cell, this material in and out of the cells? So this is um, an image taken, of course, from a microscope. So it's not like the pictorial diagram that we see. This is what it really looks like under a microscope. Okay, This is a micrograph showing you a nu the nuclear envelope, showing you the nucleolus where this ribosomal RNA synthesis take pl takes place, showing you this condensed DNA and protein. And it's showing you with these arrows, you get to see what these nuclear pores really look like, okay? So let's 
learn a little bit more about these ribosomes. So these ribosomes, the cytoprotein synthesis, they're made of ribosomal RNA, and as I mentioned, two subunits, a large and a small. And this information will be vital towards the end of the semester, where we begin to talk about DNA, RNA, and protein, which is the central dogma. Ribosomes translate the information from the DNA to make proteins. So they're protein factories. So these ribosomes perform the enzymatic activity for forming peptide bonds. And where does this take place? So ribosomes carry out protein synthesis in two locations. So in addition to structure and function being important, location is also important, okay? Even when you buy a house, you always wanna know where is it located? Location, location, location. When people are selling houses, they often try to highlight the location of the home. If it's in you know, an area close to, to um, a good school district, okay? So I want you to think about that as you apply location to the formation of proteins, okay? So ribosomes are gonna carry out protein synthesis in the cytosol, and those ribosomes that carry out protein synthesis in the cytosol are free ribosomes. And these proteins that are made in the cytosol are gonna be used in the cytosol. Another location where ribosomes carry out protein synthesis is on the outside of the ER, or they could be bound to the nuclear envelope. And these ribosomes are bound ribosomes, okay? So there are two locations where ribosomes carry out protein synthesis. They're in the cytosol or it's outside the ER or the nuclear envelope. Now the proteins that are made on the rough ER or the nuclear envelope, these proteins are destined to become part of a membrane. They're destined for secretion. And so I could hear a test question, okay? Building upon what we've learned in the previous chapters about structure and function and composition of membranes, okay? So ribosomes are protein factories. They can either be free or bound so in an animal cell, you see here, these are free ribosomes. So where are they located? And also what you see here are bound ribosomes like the studded cell phone case on the rough ER. In a plant cell, you notice that there are ribosomes that are free floating around. And also you see those that are bound to the rough endoplasma, endoplasmic reticulum here, it's like a studded cell phone case, okay? So we have both free and bound 